Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice functional equation. We have f of x plus 1 over x minus 3 equals 5x plus 1 all over x plus 1. And we're going to be solving for f of x. In other words, we're going to find the rule for this function that transforms the left-hand side, the expression on the left, to the expression on the right. And I'll be presenting two methods. One of these methods do not always apply as easily. That's why I'm going to start with the more general way to do it, which is the first method. Okay? Let's go ahead and start. Now, for my first method, I want to do what is usually done. This whole thing, obviously, this is something that you shouldn't be doing. You don't want to set this equal to x. You know what happens when you do that? You get an equation. And you, when you try to solve for that equation, that gives you a quadratic, something like this. x squared minus 3x equals x plus 1. And then x squared minus 4x minus 1 equals 0. I'm not saying you can't solve it. You can definitely solve it easily, right? That would be underestimating you guys. But solving it would not really help at all because that's not what we're looking for. We want to know the rule, like what kind of x should be an input uh, so that we can get this. Make sense? Uh, or I don't know if that makes sense, but anyways, you get the idea. So instead of setting it equal to x and just coming up with a quadratic equation, yes, we should use a variable, but that should be different from x. If you want, you, if you want to st stick, uh, like stick to x, you can use something like a big x or the curly x, like some people do this. I used to do it that way, but then I thought like this is too much work. I'm like, this is much better. Okay, and so be lazy there. You can do that, but again, that's not necessary because that's going to be kind of confusing. Instead, why don't, why don't you set this equal to t because t is a really good variable. It's also a good drink too. I don't know if you like it. Uh, maybe you like coffee better. Let us know in the comment section which one you like better. So by setting everything on the left-hand side equal to t, we're actually simplifying this expression. Like we're getting something like f of t. But of course, on the right-hand side, you still have something in terms of x, which you need to turn into uh, t. So we do need a conversion, and for that, this is going to help us. So I just, I just set x plus 1 divided by x minus 3 equal to t. That means I can cross-multiply x plus 1. You know what? I could probably... Yeah, that's fine. Let's keep it this way. x plus 1 is equal to xt minus 3t. And if you, your t is uh, mix up with plus signs, you can always use another variable like u or anything else. I just don't want to use uh, u here for a reason. So let's go ahead and put the x terms on the uh, right-hand side or on the same side. The motivation being that from this equation, I want to be able to solve for x. Does that make sense? So it makes sense to collect everything that contains x on the same side. Let's keep it positive and bring the x over and add the... 3t to both sides, so it's going to look like this. And then we can go ahead and put this on the left-hand side and factor out x. That's going to give me t minus 1. And let's write this in standard form. And of course, next step is fairly straightforward. We're going to divide everything by t minus 1. Now, can t be 1? No. Because if you think about it, I mean, t can never be 1. Because if you think about it, if this is equal to 1, then you get uh, nonsense. x plus 1 is equal to x minus 3 and 1 is equal to negative 3. No solution at all. Not even in the complex world or in any world, right? Infinity is not a number, by the way. So from here, we get the x in terms of t, which is what we were looking for. Nice. So now x can be written as 3t plus 1 divided by t minus 1. And remember, our expression was f of x plus 1 over x minus 3 equals 5x plus 1 over x plus 1. Now, Remember, when we did set this equal to t, we got that. If you substitute that for x, you can do it, but I'm not going to do it because I know that I'm going to be getting t from that. You can just confirm it by substitution, which is a good thing because if you made a mistake, then you won't get a t there. Make sense? So now I know that I'm going to get a t from here, there, but I need to do it on the right-hand side. So replace x with this on the right-hand side right here. Bring it in. 5 times x, which is 3t plus 1, divided by t minus 1, plus 1, divided by x, which is 3t plus 1, divided by t minus 1, minus 1. You got that? I replace the x values with this. Okay, so now I got an expression for f of t, which is nice because our input is so simple 
that we can easily convert to anything else. Now, one thing that will make this problem easier is uh, multiply the top and the bottom by t minus 1. That'll eliminate the fractions. I mean, they're going to cancel out anyways, but you might as well just directly distribute. When you multiply this by that, they're going to cancel out. You're going to end up with f of t equals 5 times 3t plus 1. Plus, of course, you're going to multiply by 1 as well. So that's going to be t minus 1. At the bottom, you're going to have 3t plus 1 times t minus 1 and then minus t minus 1. By the way, I forgot uh, to cancel these out. These two are going to cancel out. So I'm going to end up with 3t plus 1 minus t minus 1. Make sense? Okay. So that's f of t. Let's simplify it. If you simplify this, you're going to get something like 15t plus t. That's 16t plus 5 minus 1. That's a plus 4. 3t minus t is 2t, or not 2t if you're a tutor, 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. We can divide everything by 2, 8t plus 2 divided by t plus 1. Awesome. What was I trying to do? I was trying to solve for, let's see, I was trying to solve for um, f of x. So I got f of t and, you know, that should... Give me the answer, right? So if this is f of t, what is f of x? Because we always want to stick to x as a variable. The, our independent variable should almost always be x. Uh, and that should be the answer, right? Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and do this problem a little differently and see if we can get the same answer. If not, then I made a mistake and hopefully you're going to help me find it. Okay. Cool, cool. Now let's go ahead and proceed. So that's f of x. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. So now for my second method, let me rewrite the original problem. This is the original problem. And I'm supposed to, oops, uh, find f of x from here. So instead of um, setting it equal to a variable, let's just go ahead and manipulate the right hand side. First of all, notice that the numerator can be written as 4x plus 4 which is a multiple of x plus 1, by the way, plus x minus 3. And why did I pick 4x plus 4? Because I wanted to leave a multi... I wanted to have a multiple of x plus 1 and the remainder or the leftover, whatever. I want that to be this. You get the idea? Of course, it's not always going to work because the problem has been designed that way. It's not always the case. But for most competition problems, this is the case. There's usually alternative solution methods. Now, we're going to go ahead and split it up into two pieces like this and like that. Does that look familiar? First of all, we can factor out a four here and that's gonna give me x plus one. So x should not be negative one in this case, don't you think? And then I'm getting this. Cancel out the x plus one. Of course, x does not equal negative one in this case. It wasn't anyways because of this, so we're good. Now, this is what I got. That's the right-hand side, remember? So let's rewrite the left-hand side. And then hopefully this will become more clear. We have 4 plus x minus 3 over x plus 1. What does this tell you? Uh-oh, these two things are reciprocals. That's why we did this, right? And it worked because it's been designed that way, okay? It's by design. So now we're going to do the following. Again, I'm going to avoid using a variable because that will be so much like the first method. But now, instead, I'm going to write this as the reciprocal of the left-hand side because that's what it is, right? You agree? So, now, these two are the same thing. So, we can directly replace them with something like x, even x. I'm not saying you're going to set up an equation to solve it. I'm just saying that you replace this whole thing with x and that's what you get. What? Are you serious? Well, this should equal 4x plus 1 divided by x. But why didn't I get the same answer as I got with the first method. So did I make a mistake? Let me know. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.